think I'm live. Uh, hi everyone. I'm going to invite uh, Henry Lamy to join this conversation. Uh, let me give me a sec. Hi, Cheska. Hey guys, I just invited Henry. He's coming right now. Hey Henry. Hello. Henry. <laughs> he changed quite a lot with the confinement, the quarantine. Hey everyone. So uh, thanks, uh, our person. Thanks, Dagny, for inviting us uh, to take over uh, live IG uh, with us. It's a uh, it's a real pleasure and honor. Hope you will will tell you stuff that. Or anything, and Henry can also share with you uh, what he's been um, uh, witnessing here in the Philippines. There in the Philippines, I myself uh, went back to France, and so we've been separated for almost three months now. So it's kind of hi, Adam. <laughs> uh, yeah. So thanks again, Art Plus. Hey, Adam. All right. So uh, Henry's with people. <laughs> So Henry, where are you right now? Hi guys, I'm in Malatumbo. Yeah, this is uh, Ginebra. We're watching lots of drawings that I've done on those notebooks. Can you guys show? Kung pwede pa kita yung notebook. Oh, meron maraming notebooks namin. Ako goit yan. It's been two, three months that we are here, we're on top of the mountain, and we just uh, enjoy life as it is. Beautiful here in the nature, we're lucky that we are not confined in the city. So, we have a couple of questions from Dagny, who was kind enough to invite us doing this live. And... Yeah, I think the first one, you, you want to start, Maya, about the working conditions and where you are during the quarantine and everything? Uh, yeah, so uh, I came back from the Philippines early March, just before uh, the whole pandemic situation and uh, and everything. So Henry was supposed to join me later, two weeks later, but got stuck in the Philippines, but he's in heaven, so he's quite enjoying his stay right now. But myself, I had uh, the... Um, privilege to be able to go and see some family in Brittany and spend my two months. So in France, we also had quarantine for two months, but now it's over since uh, 10 days ago. Um, and personally, well, I've, I'm very lucky to have um, lived this uh, really greatly and took some time for myself and really just not work and get back to drawing, to creation, and and uh, working out as well, testing cuisine and cooking. I mean, yeah, I'm part of those people who had super lucky people to have um, witnessed a really interesting and very peaceful quarantine. And not really thinking about the future, to be honest, because um, so we created a cultural center here in Lyon, and we where we had to shut it down, unfortunately. So the future of our projects here in France are are quite um, uncertain. Uh, so we really don't know what tomorrow is going to be like. So I'm really just um, enjoying the present and uh, taking some time for myself. So it's quite nice, actually. That's good. Is that you, Henry? Yeah, it's like it's it's actually cool because I was afraid that no one's would. Uh, ask questions but then it's like we're both interviewing each other so it's pretty convenient on this process being two in the same video anyway uh, yeah i'm here in malasimbo like i said mindoro puerto galera and uh every day is kind of the same like we we get to have a lot more time to do everything that we like uh, so it, it makes us able to actually know what we like because usually we're we're kind of uh there's a lot of things in your mind that don't, you don't really know what to do or because you're too many signs too many inputs from the outside world and here you have to deal with your time 
you have uh, there's one thing that changed a lot is we wake up with the sun and we also uh, well not go to bed when the sun goes down but uh, not so much late as what we normally used to do and um, yeah so I guess being less distracted is really cool also we get to to hang out a lot more with our neighbors uh, we we, we didn't uh, have the mask right now, but I must say that uh, Mindoro is quite uh, COVID-free, to be honest. And we are staying most of the time in the mountains. So there are lots of checkpoints uh, all around the island. We can't go anywhere uh, without a quarantine pass to buy food or whatever. And there are lots of people who are not able to get passes. So I've, I've also uh, taken, uh, taken part to uh, good reliefs in different places um, around us, our neighbors or Mangyans or just local people who didn't have access to rice or didn't were not able to, to work during the quarantine. So they had to, to get supplied with food and we took part. So we bought uh, big sacks of rice, 25 kilos, and then we dispatched them into three kilo bags. We add up a little bit of corned beef, coffee and stuff like that so that uh, at least they have uh, just a little bit to survive. It's not the best uh, five-star hotel food that you could get, but it's something to get by at least. That's great. Next question. Uh, uh, wait, wait, I'll just... Uh, what are the also that we, we managed to Maya. do here. Sorry, Henny, I'll just uh, finish with the, um, that section. Uh, here in France, um, well, I think it's happening all over the world, which is amazing. Um, but a lot of artists, a lot of people, anyone are trying to do small things to help other people in need. Um, so we have this huge space in Lyon, and it's not being used right now. So we decided to, to lend it to other people in need. Uh, for example, Forum des Réfugiés. That's a big, big uh, NGO that are here, here to help uh, refugees uh, deal with the... Um, all the paperwork and uh, basic needs and so we're going to be lending the space uh, to be able to them so that they can have over um, 2,000 people come in and get some help so that's typically the, the initiatives we're trying to you know share with other people and it's also like just creating masks and giving them away I mean I, I've seen a lot of really beautiful uh, and generous initiatives going happening all around the world so that's what really uh, is amazing with the, these hard times where we're currently living. So, what was the question, Harry? Sorry. Um, no, first of all, I didn't. I didn't really know about that uh, mask initiative. It's kind of cool. One more question then is: I think, according to what uh, Daggy said, what are the future projects of the tavern? And we also had a project that was called Ugnayan Sapoblashon, and I think uh, we can also talk about that, if you will. Yeah, so that was a program that happened in 2017, so quite a few years ago now. Uh, we also had the honor to be featured in the Art Plus magazine um, back then. And that program, we uh, just in the month of, month of May, March, sorry, we, uh, we continued the program, but changed it up. Instead of visual arts, we switched it up to um, uh, dance. And so it was uh, very new for Henry and myself. We uh, were already used to doing the um, Tapura painting performances together. So that's where it all, all happened, started. And this time we, brought, we worked with um, several Filipino dancers and Elizabeth Rojas, um, renowned um, Filipina choreographer based in, uh, in uh, New York. So that happened in March, and it's the continuity of our program of Nines of Poblacion. Um, it happened in Conduit, uh, thanks to Leroy New. Uh, beautiful space and really giving the space to, to young artists and experimental um, shows. So that was great. Uh, so we managed to do that project and hopefully we'll be able to uh, continue that project. We had the chance also to um, work with the um, uh, Daloy Dance Company, uh, so Aya, who also did her live Instagram a few days ago. Uh, so that was a multidisciplinary project we did in March. And so that's the whole idea of Ugnayan Sapigashan is to continue some um, local initiatives where we're going to invite 
international and local artists to work together. So, and actually the 2017 edition, we, we filmed a um, documentary and it's going to go, we're done with four episodes now, uh, there's four missing, and as soon as it's out, we'll, we'll share it with you guys. Yeah, we had a blast with this project, Ugnay, and uh, the two projects, actually, 2017, when we were in the ruins and when we had all of these uh, workshops to the children and everything, all of those, all of these uh, artist encounters with different, uh, Jos Albor was here, by the way, uh, hey man, um, there's also Agnes Arellano, of course, who's part of the documentary. And lots of others that we enjoyed meeting. And for our friends, uh, Shafi, Abdul, and Alex, that we're so, Lionel, also the photographer, we're so happy that they've been able to join us and be part of this wonderful adventure. Uh, next question will be about uh, the role of art in the pandemic and and we can we can make it a little bit broader than that by also asking about the impact of the of the COVID nineteen on on art on the art world and on the world, generally speaking. Uh, what do you yeah, think, Maya? Or should I, should I start? Um, well, if you want, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> okay. Um, I think it's time to. I'm not being a gentleman, but I wanted to talk about it. Um, the pandemic also of course is going to change a lot about the way things work and it's a big challenge for all of us i think we we will have in the art world and in the rest of the world an opportunity to share and even more than what we usually did an opportunity to be uh, helping those that are in need for artists some of them would be as much able as the workshop or any other field, all of us to be a bit more. Um, but it might also be a very little example, Example, but I, I, I get the trash from the land and some of them look cool. From my, from my own perspective, they have faces on them, they have uh, printed logos and letters, and I think it's interesting to glue them on the paper and then uh, compose out of it. Mm, also, the post-pandemic future on the rest of the world is also going to ask us um, questions about our consumption model and how we usually uh, live our life on a daily basis, going to the supermarket, buying things uh, that sometimes we don't really need. So it will be questioned, I think, this thing also. What do you think, my, my love? Yeah, exactly what you said. I think a lot of people are going to go back to basics. Um, I mean, that's personally what I've, I've been um, going through for the past few months. Um, all this consumption society, uh, it doesn't really want us to, to buy more. And it really makes us think to what's the most interesting things, um, important things in our lives is, uh, is really... I mean, it's cheesy, but love and family and friends and thinking about each other and, and supporting each other. And, and I think art, the role of art in this whole pandemic thing is, um, is to really bring these people together um, in these very stressful times. Um, I think it's also an opportunity for artists to... Wow, that's a beautiful sunset. Amazing. Uh, it's also an um, opportunity for artists to be a bit more, maybe more militant and talk about issues, uh, injustice, um, yeah, things that they're not happy with and talk about that in their art and just so that uh, it'll make people, other people think um, and think about, yeah, what's important in life. As for the art scene, unfortunately, and we see it also here in France, so I can't even imagine in the Philippines. Uh, here in France, we're quite lucky because we have a lot of um, help from the government, uh, financial help, um, which is not the case in the Philippines, it's, which is very sad. Um, but even in France, there's a lot of artists um, 
and even not just the art scene, but the restaurants, the cultural scene, um, everyone's really taking a toll. And a lot of, of companies are going to shut down. A lot of artists may um, may stop being artists because it's too hard at this time. So that's unfortunately what's the reality of what's happening right now. So I hope uh, people are going to stand tall and, and manage to, to continue to create. Uh, we see we see you sitting in your living room right now, but can you also tell us how many kilometers you usually run per day? <laughs> no, that's a uh, no. No one's interested by that. I just yeah, I started running during this whole pandemic, so I'm really uh, in yoga and running, so that's what changed. <laughs> uh, and Henry, how are you preparing for the post-pandemic future? I'm I'm hoping to actually find a place that would be closer from the nature, and find also another environment that uh, that maybe art will not be present, and we can we can develop new tools to help people share around art, share on a general basis, but using art as a channel because art is about expressing yourself so if you if you go to places that have no museums no art galleries no art classes i think it can be an opportunity for both the artist who's able to um, express its passion and talent and the community who will receive um a certain number of of tools, like I was saying, to express themselves. I think it's important for all of us to be happy. And to be happy, we need to know what our dreams are. And to know what our dreams are, we need to fight for something. But how do, how do we find this thing? And how do we get aware of it? I think the process is quite similar to finding its dream, is to be, to be free, to be free in its personality, to be allowed to, to mentally allow yourself you uh, to, to to dig in the direction that you want a little bit like a kid who necessarily doesn't really ask questions to, to himself like you see kids playing randomly and running from uh, a, a car to uh, uh, another puppet or whatsoever or building a, a house tree uh, from one time to another, and then interacting with another kid or going on its own. Uh, the way kids react is very free, and then as we grow up and as we educate, we tend to lose our this freedom because we don't think it's that much important anymore. And also, the education system makes us think that it's not good to be yourself, so you have to uh, behave in a certain uh, according to a certain model that the society tells you. This thing, I think... Uh, for many reasons is, is, is good because we, of, we of course uh, need to live together and if there were absolutely no rule, that would be kind of messed up. But I think there's a way for, for all of us to, to be aware of both of these rules that makes us able to live together and develop our, our core, our own self in order to be happy. Mm, that's beautiful. Uh, I also wanted to add that um, both Henry and I are quite privileged uh, to have uh, lived this uh, quarantine um, in nature, near nature, and it's clearly not the case for the ma vast majority of the people on Earth. Um, so, I mean, the privilege, I mean, it's, our privilege is huge, and I, I keep thinking about all these people who have who don't have that much chance, sorry. Um, and also all the people stuck at home who can't work, who are more afraid of dying of uh, hunger than from the virus, um, from all those nurses and doctors that are working hard every day and then live the same uh, quarantine uh, that we lived. And um, yeah, it's really crazy, all these people who continue working. And so I'm really very grateful for these people. and those who have uh, a lot less chance than, than Henry and I. Uh, also, all the victims of, you know, child abuse and 
and uh, conjugal abuse. I mean, it's crazy what's happening also for these people right now. So, yeah, I just wanted to say that. Um, nonetheless, yeah. how would you like to crazy. remember these times? Henry? Yeah, you wanted to add something? I was just saying that it's something that we don't think about and it's also opposing another phenomenon that we all tend to speak a lot of the, the, the virus, but we also forget to say that it kills much less people than any other disease like cancer, pollution, whatever. So those things I think are worth being said. The way I will remember these times is I think it's almost like a war not being too uh, pessimistic about it of course but being locked down and having all these constraints popping up gradually those messages that we hear from the news those death but like like we just said in the past 20 minutes we're learning a lot for those who accept the challenge because for others you can get overwhelmed you can have uh many problems facing many harsh situations uh being stuck in an apartment with lots of other people and not being able to food for those who I think it's a blessing somehow because it's been it's been many years it's been for many of us I think more than five ten years that we are not used to just remain at home Lissity that uh, us to, to, to should I call this, this time. Uh, I would like to remember this as something um, very important in the in the history, I think, of the world and of uh, the 7 billion people living it right now. Um, I remember it as spending a time with our loved ones. Unfortunately, Henny and I were separated for three months instead of two weeks. But yeah, I, I was very lucky to have spent it with my parents, with my sister, my cousin, their loved ones. Um, yeah, it was uh, it was crazy to share that time and live together under the same roof. Haven't hasn't been happening for the past uh, thirteen years. So, uh, really back to basics as well, and thinking about yourself when you're lucky enough to be able to have that luxury, of course. But yeah, it's just just taking time with loved ones and also taking a step back and. And I hope this is not going to be too late after this whole pandemic that we just don't go back to what it was before. That's my my uh, main concern. I hope everyone's going to realize that now it's alarming times for our planet and, um, and we can't. Just go back, like, like the way we consumed before nature, and just spending time with loved ones. Yeah, it was 
I'm definitely way better now than before. <laughs> what about you, Henry? Uh, I think we lost Henry. He's on the top of the mountain. Um, are there any other questions, guys? Because this is, it's been, uh, yeah, roughly 30 minutes. Uh, again, I feel very honored to be able to share this with you, even though it's not necessarily interesting for everyone. But um, thanks, Art Plus, for uh, giving us this opportunity. And it's quite a nice, also, um, way, uh, souvenir to remember this, these times with this video. <laughs> All right, Henry, you want to add something, last thing? Uh, we're losing Henry, guys. Henry, are you there? Okay, well, I think he's lost for good. Yeah, Henry. sorry, the connection's cutting continuously. Yeah. That's, it's really hard. Um, yeah, anyway, what was do you the... want to add one last thing? Love and light always and always. Yes, you're definitely right, South Arts Festival. Yeah, your mental health, Henry. That was the question. Yeah, much better. Um, <laughs> that's it. I think we'll open this this uh, little two minutes, two more minutes to questions. Thanks, and then Maurice. We'll, uh, hey, thanks. Terrence, we love you too. <laughs> Magic awesome. photographer. This is quite nice. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, I'm Terrence gonna. Terence also stuck on an island, uh, by the way. Oh, yeah, Terence, beautiful photos has been taken in uh, Palawan, I think, right? You should check it out, Terence Ansioko, who was I on the ice, right? He is 30 hours away from us by boat. That's what he told me. Wow. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, living the island but I dream. Anywhere. Very lucky. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Henry, I'm gonna turn this off and I think I need to share this for everyone who hasn't seen the video and who's interested in hearing ourselves. Thank you guys Thank so you guys much. Plus. You say bye-bye. Thank Good you. Bye, Chaska. <laughs> bye. 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 bye.